Jane Velez Mitchell for Jane Unchained. Make it stop. That's what a lot of people in America are saying about the Jody Arias penalty phase trial. When is it going to end? Travis Alexander was murdered by this woman in 2008. Here it is, 2015, and the wheels of justice still turning. Let's go straight out to the one and only Beth Karras of the fabulous new site Karras on Crime. You are in Phoenix, Arizona, in the courtroom. What on earth is going on with this trial that will not end? It is going to end, Jane, and I think the evidence is going to finish the end of next week. It is right now, February 18th, as we are talking. The jury was told when they were selected in early October last year that December 18th, two months ago, would be the outside date for the trial. So I am sure this jury is spent. There are 16 of them, four will be alternates. We don't know who. I believe this case will be in summations by around March 2nd or 3rd, and that is if the prosecution doesn't call any more witnesses, because right now the, the defense is in its sur rebuttal case. They have four witnesses to call. The first one is on the stand. Hopefully they'll finish with him tomorrow on Thursday, February 19th, and then next week, it's a four-day week, uh, they'll wrap up their evidence. Let's hope. Well, let me ask you this. Everybody is wondering some big questions. One, the family of Travis Alexander, they've been through hell. Uh, they've had to upend their lives for the first trial. Are, are they in the courtroom? Are they just literally putting their lives on hold month after month to come into the courtroom every day? Yes, they are. Every, almost every single day of this trial, Samantha and Tanisha, two of Travis's sisters, have been here. But Stephen was here in the beginning. He came again in January. He's here today and, and, and tomorrow, Brother Stephen. Uh, Sister Hillary has also made an appearance. But the, the two steady members of the family have been Tanisha and her husband Harold and Samantha. Let me ask you about Jody Arias and the final crescendo of all this. We know that she said she was, oh, too scared or whatever to testify in open court, so the judge briefly allowed her to testify in secret until the media sued, and the court said, the higher court said, uh-uh, you can't testify in secret, and then I don't believe she took the stand after that. So a lot of people are wondering, well, given her wild allocution the last time where she whipped out a Survivor t-shirt, is she going to do another allocution? What are your thoughts on that? Well, she certainly has a right to do it, and that would be the last thing the jury would hear probably by the end of next week if she's going to allocute. But, you know, you would think that, you know, if she didn't want to testify in open court, she says because of death threats and, and she couldn't really sort of be herself if she knew that members of the media were there. Uh, of course, she's looking at the jury this time in an allocution, not facing the public gallery, looking at members of the media or beyond the, the lawyer who's questioning her if she's on the stand. But, you know, I suppose it's possible she won't even allocute. However, she should, and that should be the last thing the jury will hear in terms of evidence in the case before summations. Now, I want to say to everybody watching, Beth Karras has this extraordinary service, karasoncrime.com. you got to go there. Every nuance, every detail of this case uh, is there for the asking for the tip of the finger. So please check it out. Uh, Beth, I want to ask you about the porn because there were claims that there was porn found on Travis's computer. It didn't come out at the first trial and it was a big hullabaloo. The defense asked the whole thing to be tossed. The judge turned that down. But what is the latest with the porn? It's not finished. We are still going to hear a few more witnesses in the defense's you know, final uh, lineup of witnesses dealing with this issue. But at this point, both sides agree that there is evidence that porn sites were, were viewed. And as recently as June 1st, 2008, Travis was murdered on June 4th. Now, there, it's not like there were images downloaded on his computer. But there's evidence that sites were, were you know, looked at, were viewed. And there are viruses probably from looking at porn on the computer. This was missed during the first trial. Juan Martinez stood in front of the jury and said there was no porn. 
it's true there was no porn downloaded, but it's not true that Travis Alexander, or at least the user of Travis's computer, never looked at porn. So why is it a big deal at this stage? Because it was really discovered at this point, and it's going to be an issue on appeal, and this is the defense's opportunity and the state's to fully litigate the issue, because once she is sentenced, regardless of what Aries' sentence is, this case is out of the hands of the trial judge, and it's in the appellate courts, and the record, the evidence, is what it is. So I think both sides really wanted to get this litigated, and they did it at the expense of this penalty phase jury because frankly I don't think that the porn issue is that big a deal in mitigation. It supports the defense's position that Travis Alexander was conflicted. He held himself out as the 30-year-old virgin and a Mormon to his friends, you know, a good Mormon to his friends, but he also was a highly sexual man. He looked at pornography like a lot of men. There's, there was just no evidence despite the allegations that there was child porn, but it was adult porn, and uh, you know he was conflicted about that. So this supports that conflict, but there was enough evidence of that. Just having a sexual relationship with Jody Arias was evidence of the conflict. So this porn didn't add that much, I don't think, to the mitigation. It, you know, as I said, this was litigated at the expense of the jury for the appeal. Well, uh, let me ask you this. First of all, if you if you could get away with murder because a guy's been looking at porn, half the men in this country would be, at least uh, would wouldn't be here anymore. So I, I just think that it's just a total overreach. Uh, but let me ask you this question. I think the bottom line is I really want to know since I was there for the first trial. I can't even imagine what people are going through sifting through these issues again. Uh, yeah. you know, the allegations of domestic violence, I would pull my hair out in tufts if I had to be sitting there uh, listening to this stuff over and over again. What impact is it having on the jurors, the judge, the prosecutors, the defense? Are they all going mad? Um, well, I think, yes. I think there's a lot of fatigue going on here, which is a term I used in 2013 when we were all here saying there was Jody fatigue with Arias being on the stand for 18 days. This jury is probably fatigued. Don't forget, though, they're hearing it for the first time. They're not sitting through it the way I did and you did and the judge did and the lawyers. Uh, I'm sure everyone is just spent. Frankly, I'm surprised that Juan Martinez didn't put on more of a rebuttal case. He had the evidence wide open to him. The rules are different in a, in a mitigation phase, a penalty phase. He could have put on any of Jody Aries' statements. He uh, hearsay is admissible, although a defendant's statement so is an exception to hearsay. But he, you know, he, he could have put on, you know, just piled on the evidence of the premeditation, and this jury didn't hear a lot of that. Hmm. This jury wow. didn't hear her statements to huh. the media. I'd never hurt Travis Alexander if I did. I would uh, ask for the death penalty. No jury will ever convict me. Well, I mean, she's been convicted, so that statement wouldn't come in. But um, the things that she did in premeditation, they, they don't know. They don't know? I mean, they don't know uh, about the gas cans from the boyfriend? They don't know about well, the dying of the hair? They don't know about... Well, uh, I, I, the license plate that they don't know it in detail. Like I, I have to go back and see if Juan Martinez opened on that on October twenty first. They may have got they may have got it in broad strokes. They didn't hear from the witnesses themselves. Oh, maybe one 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 store witness may have testified about gas cans. I'm not sure, but I have really have to go back and spend so many months. Yeah. But um, <laughs> they didn't hear it the way the way. Uh, and, and I know this as just as a, a person sitting in these trials, you forget. You forget. You these I trials know, you do. on so long, you can't remember. It all gets, uh, I mean, maybe. When I was doing live shots all day on television, you know, it was in my head. And I have so much other stuff I have to do running my website, everything from dealing with, you know, customer user issues and shooting the video and uploading video and things that I didn't have to do when I was on, on TV. I could just focus and I could look up stuff and study it at night. There's no time for that now, running a website. No time at all. In any event, there's a, I, he did put in some of it in the beginning, 
but it didn't have the impact. And I thought that he was going to pile it on. I don't think it had the impact. I thought he was going to pile it on and rebuttal, and he didn't. But maybe he'll just put it all together in summation. I mean, if I were Juan Martinez, I would just be exhausted. The process. Just like men mentally exhausted, yeah. From have and the defense too, from having to live with this case for years of my life. Clock. Well, and also, you know, the the defense attorney, the lead defense attorney, Kirk Nury, can't stand Jody Arias. I mean, he said as much in open court. The idea that he has to devote this much of his life to pouring over minutia of her sex life and all these other things, honestly, I think it's a form of torture. But be that as it may. I have to wonder, as we wrap up, the final question, and I don't want to put you on the spot. I know you're not going to predict the outcome. Who knows? But you've got to wonder if that subconscious connection that the jury is forming with Jody Arias, just by very nature of the fact that this is going on month after month after month, when you sit in a courtroom with somebody else, you got to wonder if it's going to make it harder for them, even if they wanted to give her the death penalty, to actually sort of, so to speak, pull the trigger and give her the death penalty? You know, I don't know. There's a part of me that thinks that you, you might be right, that, that it may be too hard for them. But they didn't really bond with her on the stand. She was on the stand for two half days in, in a closed session, and that was it. And she didn't get too far, only to meeting Travis. She went through her background, her early boyfriends, and up until meeting Travis Alexander. She didn't testify in that closed session uh, to the uh, ab alleged ab abuse or to the murder itself and the fog that she was in and and you know that photo that's behind you of her showing um, the yep. position that he was in when he supposedly right. lunges at her. So right. she, the jury didn't hear any of that from her. But there's three possibilities: uh, life, death, or a deadlock. And uh -huh. the deadlock is a life sentence. So the yep. odds are with her, right? Two out of three chances, uh, two out of three uh, possibilities are life sentences. Well, I just want to thank you, Beth Karras. You are such a uh, fantastic journalist and a dear friend to take the time, and I know how busy you are. So everybody, KarrasOnCrime.com, you must check it out. Uh, it's an education. I mean, basically, after uh, hanging out at her website, you can take the bar. <laughs> it's a slight exaggeration, but you learn a lot. So thank you, Beth Karras, uh, who is uh, talking to us from Phoenix, Arizona. She's in the courtroom every single day. And uh, for your sake and for the sake of everybody involved, I hope it does wrap up soon. Jane Velez Mitchell yes. for Jane Unchained.